<laughs> I'm, I'm totally. Well, I'm gonna save one for you then. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yeah. I appreciate it. Look at this. This is one more bite. Hold on, so hold on, so look at that. Look at that. I don't even like eating it from people, but I can't help myself. <laughs> Hey team, Chef Eric here. Uh, for those of you who know me personally, you know I've traveled the world and done a lot of cool seafood cooks. Seafood mm -hmm. is my passion. I drive in, in the ocean. You know, I just I just love it. Uh, one of my favorite things to cook wow. and to hang out with are Come cold on. water lobsters. You know, Good so Lord. yeah, this beast uh, and is, and she's a female. You can tell by the hairy legs here, and that's where they hold their row. Uh, yeah, we're doing a simple Mornay. It's not not a lot of moving parts here, except for the lobster, obviously. <laughs> uh, and if you were going to do this in boiling water, we'd put it head first down there in boiling water. Uh, we're going to put the knife through the brain cavity so that we can uh, do this humanely. We're going to part. I, I always do this. I start talking about <laughs> it. Let's just do it. Let's get into the action. So we've dispatched the lobster. We've taken the rubber bands off the claws. Let's take a closer look at our grill setup today. Uh, it's a 50-50 setup. So I've got a pan that has come to temperature over direct heat, and then I've got an indirect side. Now we're gonna put this two pound lobster over the indirect side right now, and I wanna cook it about 50% of the way, okay? We can go ahead and take off these larger claws and just kinda pile pile them up a little bit. So we're- Oh wow, I didn't know you could do it like that. Yeah, a little twist and then pull, uh, but we're gonna set these here. And don't worry, you'll still see some movement, but that's just nerves, okay? And we're gonna get the lobster cooked about 50% of the way. With this hot pan right now, we're gonna go ahead and make our Mornay sauce. A simple bechamel, add cheese, turns into a Mornay. Very simple, here we go. So we're gonna take some butter, and you can see it's coming to temperature nice, so we want melted butter. And once this melts, we're gonna go ahead and add some flour. So your roux is simply fat and flour. And then we're gonna cook it out for about, I don't know, seven minutes until it doesn't smell like flour anymore, right? We don't want it to taste like flour. So this is one of your classical mother sauces, not the roux itself, but the bechamel. Now, we're gonna add milk to this here in a little bit. That's what makes it a bechamel. And from there, we could turn it into a multitude of sauces, but we're gonna whip in some Gruyere cheese uh, and a little bit of Parmesan cheese and turn it into our Mornay sauce for our lobster. That's so, what makes a Mornay, just the cheese? Cheese, yep. Huh. Now, if we were to put, instead of milk, if we were to add, say, chicken stock, it would be a, a velouté. Um, and you could do all kinds of stuff with that as well. And that's the beginning of like your traditional curry sauces and stuff. We want this to look like wet sand. We do a lot of steak cooks and we do a lot of this, that, and the other, but as a classically French trained chef on the grill all the time, it's kind of singing my song a little bit. Nathan, you smell that? It smells amazing. It's like yeah. toasted. It's toasted. You can see it in the color, right? So the further you take a roux, the less thickening power it has. There's three types of roux, right? There's a, a blonde roux, a brown roux, and a dark roux. Uh, so a dark roux would have less thickening power. Um, we're gonna take this to eh, just past a blonde roux. And we're almost there. Uh, the milk, when you add milk to this, we're gonna pour it in a little bit at a time and it needs to be warm. So I just popped it in the microwave for, for a second. If you add cold water to a hot roux, you're gonna get lumps. There's no, no way around it. So nice warm milk. And here we go. A little bit at a time. Slowly incorporating. This is our bechamel happening. I'm gonna keep on working it a little bit. Anywhere you see lumps, anywhere you see bubbles, start hitting it. And you can use a whisk if you like, but I just find a wooden spoon that does the trick for me. Notice how it's starting to accept the liquid. It's starting to thicken up a little bit. Now, one of the other flavoring ingredients for bechamel is a, a white onion with two or three cloves and a bay leaf. All right? You can even put a little nutmeg in there if you like. I'm not into the nutmeg. All right? And we're going to do this for about six or seven minutes. Go ahead and bathe that onion if you like. Start activating it. Beautiful. Look for a nice smooth consistency. I'm liking it, very sauce-like, very ribbony. 
if that's a word, ribbony. It is, it is now. Yeah, uh, and we're gonna pull it off and mount in our cheese. So we got a great bechamel, uh, and we're gonna go with two types of cheese today. Yeah, this is how you'd make your mac and cheese too, if you're, if you're into that, you're so inclined. Let's take out our flavor bomb. We're gonna whip in two types of cheese. We've got Gruyere and Parmesan cheese. It's gonna thicken it a little bit. It's gonna salt it a little bit. Oh yeah, just get in there. <laughs> and with that action, we have a wonderful little Mornay sauce. Now you can tell it's almost a little gray, right? It's because we've been using cast iron. Whenever you use cast iron, it actually imparts iron into your diet. So cool. And then just to draw that out a little bit, we'll go with a little fresh chopped parsley. And voila. We have got a Mornay sauce, and can you smell that? Oh man. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa! Wow, look at it, it's starting to hold the cheese. Oh my goodness. Yeah, look at that. Oh, do that again. Oh. Can you get a slow-mo on that? Yeah, ready? Go. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and bring that lobster over, split the tail, pull the meat. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. <laughs> Beautiful. Whoa. Wow. Claws. All right. Now we're gonna continue all the way down the body, split it, and then split that tail as well. Now we flip. Amazing. Yeah. Lots of big bold flavors here. Mm-hmm. Now there's gonna be some interesting colors in here. The tamale <laughs> and that sort of thing. Yep, yep. So we're gonna get rid of this. The liver. Oh, and it comes right out, so don't worry. Yeah, easy, easy peasy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but look at this, this is what we're after. So we're cleaning this cutting board off just a touch, and we'll pull that par cooked meat. You can see how it's cooked here in the tail, and we'll just rip it out. And the reason we par cooked it was so it would pull out like that because when it's really soft, it's hard, it's hard to pull out, okay? And then you can take this inside and rinse that out so you don't have any of the uh, undesirables in there. Let's take a look at the claws because there's some great nutty meat in there. Look at that, jeez. Okay. Did it just get on my lens? Look. I... No? Okay, we're good. We're good. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. I mean, when you're dealing with seafood, it does have a tendency just to get everywhere. It does, it does. All right, again, the way to do that is just kind of Gently peel that guy back. Use a mallet or the back of a knife if you're safe with it. I think that might do it. Let's see. Uh -huh. And then gently reveal that meat. And the, the claw meat is so much nuttier than the tail meat. Completely different flavor, flavor profile. Woo! Come on, baby. It's hot. A little warm? A little warm. All right, now we clean our cutting board of all the shells so we don't get any of that in. We're gonna take this meat, which is absolutely stunning and gorgeous, and the claw meat as well, and just chop it up into medium-sized pieces. All right, let's take a spoon and put a little bit of our Mornay sauce directly into the bottom of the shell. Oh, wow. Cheesy. Same thing with the other one. Now we're gonna put our pieces right back in and then top it with some more Mornay sauce. And just try to go all the way up and down the entire length. This is so cool. Yeah, this is fun. This is fun stuff. And then we're gonna put it back on the grill and gratin it. And it's kind of its own self-sustained little, little cavity going on here. Now we're gonna go hard. I'm going with the big spoon now and going right over top. Now as this heats up, it's gonna start getting more liquidous. Oh yeah. Now we give them a little space so we get some more heat up the middle. Some of that's gonna drop, we'll get some smoke. That's us. So we're gonna close it for about 10 more minutes now. We want this bubbling, we want all of that uh, nice meat to get tender and it'll get more tender as it cooks. It's a little chewy as it's, it's uh, undercooked. And so it's just gonna start roasting. We're gonna start getting those aromas of the, of the, uh, of the bechamel, of the Mornay, of the lobster. Beautiful things are happening. Six minutes and it's the most heavenly smell I've ever smelled in my entire life. I promise you. Let's take let's take a look together. Come on in. Yes. Oh, come on. Look at some bubbles going on. Got some color happening. 
All right, so let's uh, safely and surely get these babies off the grill. I'm gonna take my plate to the grill and just do my best to kind of gently guide without spilling. <laughs> it's been a minute, Mornay. It's been a minute. And then of course, this is driving me insane. So we're gonna wipe that off. And then I've got, I wanna add a little bit more color just to pop. So we're gonna put a little chopped parsley on there and then a little Lane's Barbecue Blackening Seasoning to accentuate, like that red is gonna make you think lobster, right? It just automatically pops, it looks better. I got some on the plate that's A-OK. -okay. That is a dish and a half. I mean, that's, that's probably the most fun thing I've done since that sweet tea turkey. <laughs> it was pretty awesome too. Uh, but I love, we got some gratin here, lovely. Absolutely lovely. Let's take a bite. <laughs> no. I mean, that is a mouthful of deliciousness and a mouthful of burn right there, but I can't help myself. I'm gonna go for it. That's, I see claw, I see tail, I see Mornay sauce. That is naughty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, mm, team, that was a bite. That was a bite. Uh, decadent, simple. You gotta try this at home. Like, why? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do this for somebody you love? You know, I mean, that's 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 it's impressive. Pretty, it's pretty special. Uh, and you can do that Mornay sauce ahead of time, and then have it sitting in the refrigerator if you need to warm it up, whatever. I, I don't want to take away from the moment though. This was, <laughs> this was this was spectacular, spectacular. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna close it out, folks. That's it. Happy 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 Friday. Yeah, <laughs> do do this over the weekend. Okay. Uh, Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> You're for clips. You're in the moment. I gotta yeah, get a bite. I'm, I'm kind of like emotional. I yeah, want a bite. Gotta buy. We got a whole, whole freaking right. side for you here. Well, it's in the yeah. video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, do all the things. The, the, the subscribe, the notification, the like. Please leave a comment. I love reading the comments and responding back. Thank you so much for for hanging out with it. this. Was, this was this was near and dear to my heart. This was a special one. So, uh, team, as always, from my backyard to yours. Cheers, and happy grilling.